It also proved that Jehovah favored Israel over all nations and that Moses was the divinely appointed mediator of Jehovah God. And of course, all of this pointed to the greater ruler of Israel, the Lord Jesus Christ, who would finally and permanently establish his earthly kingdom pictured in the historical kingdom of ancient Israel. It is little wonder, therefore, that the six trumpet judgments that we find here in Revelation find their parallel in the plagues of Pharaoh. In fact, the Old Testament prophets understood that the plagues against Egypt were to be repeated during the day of the Lord. For example, Micah tells us in chapter 7 and verse 15, as in the days when you came out from the land of Egypt, I will show you miracles. Beloved, even as the arrogant Pharaoh and his armies were destroyed, so too will the Antichrist and his armies be judged at Armageddon. And once again, Jehovah will deliver Israel. Even as Israel believed the Lord and his servant Moses after their supernatural deliverance, according to Exodus 14, 31, and the fear of God spread to all of the surrounding Gentile nations, Likewise, Israel will once again worship their deliverer, and the nations of the earth will tremble again, as they did 3,500 years ago. So the fireball and the subsequent earthquake serve as the signal of avenging wrath. And in verse 6, we read, and the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound to them. So here we come finally to the first four trumpets, judgments upon the earth's ecosystem. The first trumpet destroys one-third of the earth's vegetation, verse 7. And the first sounded, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. You may ask, if all the green grass is burned up, then why does grass still exist later on in the fifth trumpet? And the answer is really twofold. First of all, it grows back before the fifth trumpet. But secondly, grass is seasonal, and much of the grasslands will be dormant when this first trumpet occurs and thus protected but will become vulnerable later on by the fifth. So there is no contradiction. Notice he describes this as hail and fire mixed with blood that's thrown to the earth. Hail and fire were often used historically by God to rain upon the wicked and divine judgment. We see that throughout Scripture. This combined with the previous firebrand and earthquake would once again trigger massive volcanic, volcanic eruptions around the globe, spewing out enormous amounts of, of ash and lava and gases into the atmosphere, given, giving the appearance of blood. And while we cannot fathom completely all that is going on here, certainly we can't understand it completely, whatever this is, we know it will be catastrophic. Imagine the fires on the, the earth's surface. Imagine the loss of oxygen. Imagine the globe being enveloped with smoke. The loss of pasture lands, the loss of, of livestock, the result, of, the, the result now of the, of the fire would cause millions and millions of animals to die. Think of the instant destruction of, of crops and, and forests and the wood products that they produce, not to mention the plant medicines. I understand that 25% of Western pharmaceuticals are derived just from the rainforest and the ingredients that they find in those forests. So the death toll here on human beings will be enormous. That's the first trumpet. Second, the second trumpet, judgments destroy one-third of the sea, verse 8. And the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. And a third of the sea became blood, and a third of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, 
and a third of the ships were destroyed. Perhaps this is a great asteroid or meteorite, and I can only imagine the look on the faces of the Christ-mocking news media reporting what they see approaching the earth. Those who have, during this time of tribulation, been joyfully reporting the systematic extermination of Christians because of the Word of God and because of the testimony which they had maintained, according to chapter 6, verse 9. And keep in mind, while on the one hand, the Antichrist will demand the, worship, demand the world to worship him during this period of time, on the other, the whole world understands that this is, according to chapter 6, verse 16, the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of their wrath has come, and who is able to stand and yet most will refuse to submit. To be sure, the force of this collision will result in enormous tsunamis. We read here that it's going to destroy a third of the world's sea vessels. It will destroy a third of marine life, causing a third of the sea to become like blood. And perhaps God will transform some of the water into blood like He did in the waters of the Nile in Exodus chapter 7. But again, the devastation of life on the planet will be beyond description. The third trumpet judgment destroys one-third of the world's fresh water. Verse 10, and the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and a third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the waters because they were made bitter. The word star in Greek is austere, and it can refer to any celestial body like the sun or the moon, but this is probably a reference to a meteor or a comet because we see the word torch here, which translates the Greek term lampas, which was used in the ancient days to describe meteors and comets. And then the added phrase, burning like a torch, would seem to describe a comet or meteor entering the earth's atmosphere with its tail of fire. And evidently, the debris field here is so enormous as this object fragments in every direction that it pollutes a third of the rivers and the springs. Again, a catastrophic destruction on fresh water. It's interesting to note that we see here in this particular judgment the reversal of the miracle of Mara in Exodus 15, where you will recall that God miraculously used a tree to make the bitter water sweet to sustain the covenant people in the wilderness. And notice the name of the star is called Wormwood. Absinthos in Greek is used only here in the New Testament. This is a shrub-like plant that produces a, a very bitter aromatic oil used to make absinthe, a highly valued liquor in the ancient days. It was one of those things that would cure whatever ails you, and it's still available today in some countries although it is so toxic that its manufacture is banned in many countries because it has been known to kill people. I checked just out of curiosity on the internet and I found that I could purchase a bottle for a mere $135.